Let me see if this describes you. You've got an incredible product or service, but you're struggling to build your subscriber list by tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands. You're not getting enough people opting in. You may have a lead magnet of some kind. It could be a webinar, a free PDF, a report, or even a free consultation. And even when people actually opt in to your email list or subscriber list or messenger list even, they may opt in, but they're not necessarily buying on the back end. Well, in this free three-part series, I'm going to step you through some of the top and hard-earned lessons from building email lists of over 100,000 and counting. So grab a pen and paper because I'm going to dive straight in. The number one reason that I see people failing to build a huge email list is first of all, they don't set the objective on building a large list. They're just trying to get through to the end of the week, get enough leads and make enough money to pay all of the bills. The first thing that you must have is a grand vision because having a grand vision means that you work back from there and you map out a strategy that allows Allows that vision to come to full fruition. Now, many of you are thinking, hey Ben, I don't even have a thousand email subscribers. How the hell can I set a vision and a goal for generating a hundred thousand, especially when I don't have a budget? Well, the first thing that I'm going to tell you straight up is never let an excuse of zero budget stop you from having a goal such as that. When I first started out a number of years ago, I had zero budget to play around with. That was in fact an incredible benefit and I'm very grateful for having that lesson because it taught me to innovate and create and be resourceful when I had a lack of money when I was first developing my business. By having no budget, it means that you do have to be more creative. By being more creative, it means that you typically stand out more than some of your competitors that have huge budgets in the marketplace, but they've become lazy because they're relying on that cash flow that just funds the marketing campaigns. And if a marketing campaign doesn't work for them, it's not necessarily a big deal. But when it's a big deal for an individual that doesn't really have the funds to play around with, it means that you fine tune every little cog in the machine until you get your outcome. And that will put you in in really good standing for the future because when you set that up from day one or even right now you might be rebooting your business but when you set it up initially it means that any kind of advertising spend that you have in the business you'll get a greater return on investment and that's where you take the revenue from those initial sales and funnel it back into future advertising campaigns and that could be 20 percent of the income that's coming back into the business back into marketing so you can grow and that's how i've personally grown my business without having a budget to play around with if you're sitting there thinking hey We've got really cool products and services, but I've got no money to market this. Use that as your reason to grow a strong and solid business and not as an excuse to give up. And never ever look at any of your competitors and say, hey, they've got money, I don't, they've got a huge list, I don't how the hell am I going to make this work? You will make it work if you have a large target. So I want you to set that target right now, maybe a hundred thousand and maybe more, but set a damn target that you can aspire to reach. The second reason that people really struggle with building a huge list is that they fail to jump the shark. Now, if you've ever heard of that term before, it's a term used in TV. Jumping the shark is where a TV series, the ratings may be dropped so all of a sudden they put a plot twist in there that gets everyone talking about the show, it goes viral and all of a sudden the show turns around and it's rebooted. Are any of you Game of Thrones fans? Then please let us know in the comments below. You will remember The Red Wedding and if you don't know what The Red Wedding is then Google it because it was a huge twist in the plot line that I know for me <laughs> got me absolutely sucked into the series. So what has this got to do with your lead generation strategy? Well, put simply, 
is your lead magnet or opt-in or the way that you try and drive people to opt into your email list, is it imaginative? Is it capturing people's attention? Or is it like everybody else's? In the past year, social media has changed significantly, which meant the lead generation strategies that we employed over a year ago don't necessarily work like they did back then. And here's one of the reasons why. Everyone's offering the same type of lead magnets. There's nothing imaginative about them. I remember several years back when I was kickstarting my public speaking and consulting career, I decided to give away one of my first books for free. You can probably imagine that spending tens of thousands of hours creating a book, then selling it, then a year later going, hey, you know what? I think I'm gonna give it away for free to build my email list. You can imagine that that was pretty nerve wracking. Well, as my dad used to say, if it doesn't make you nervous, it's simply not worthwhile doing. I did decide to give it away for free and it generated over 100,000 downloads within the first year, which launched my career and I'll forever be grateful for that. Back then, no one else was giving away free books. Yeah, there were some free PDFs, but there weren't that many people in the industry. So when you go out and make a major statement like that and jump the shark, you will have that first mover advantage, which means generating leads for your business will be really cost effective and really cheap. So what I want you to think about now is the current lead magnets that you have in your business that are driving the leads in that you hope to convert, whether it be a newsletter, a free PDF, uh, a quiz, which we're running a lot lately, which is smashing it, or even messenger marketing campaigns and building up that list with some kind of opt-in offer. Have a look at your lead magnet right now. Is it really inspiring? Do people want to opt in for it? Because if people aren't opting in for it, then there's something wrong with that particular hook and with that particular offer. And I want you to take a look at it and compare it against others in your industry. Does it really stand out? Or could you jump the shark in some way that will make you stand out from everyone in your industry? It may seem totally crazy to everyone and even you right now, but it's gonna boost the profile of your business and get people opting in like crazy. You need to do this, especially if you have zero budget when it comes to building a list and converting it. Before I dive into the next point, do you wanna test how good your list building strategies are. If so, jump over to benangel.co forward slash list building. That's benangel.co forward slash list building. I've got a free diagnostic tool to help you out. The third reason that you're struggling to build a list of subscribers that can buy your products and services is pretty simple. It's your opt-in page. Where are you driving prospects to go when it comes to opting in for that lead magnet. Is it a landing page or is it a general website? I will always advise to set up individual landing pages that are free from all of the other navigational elements that the rest of your website has. It's a standalone page that has one core message, one core hook, and one core problem that you hope to solve when a prospect actually opts in. So when it comes to that particular opt-in page, which I'm gonna cover in more detail in the upcoming videos, when it comes to that page, take a look at it. Does that page clearly outline the one specific problem that your prospects need help with right this second? One of the best things that you can do is to survey your email list and ask them, what are the top three problems that you're having right now in relation to X, Y, or Z? Take that feedback and assess that feedback. If you get 20 or 30 answers, you're gonna find that there are gonna be some specific patterns that start to unfold and some very specific keywords that your target market is using consistently. So make sure that those keywords are reflected on your opt-in page so it immediately grabs their attention and draws them in and makes them want to opt in immediately. Focus in on this core page, especially if people aren't currently opting into your list. 
but you are getting people to visit it. And finally, the last reason why people really struggle to build a huge subscriber list. And this one's pretty simple. You don't know your numbers. At the very start, when I started out growing my list, I really had no idea what numbers I needed to focus in on at that particular time. So I'm gonna tell you what they are right now. And you need to write them down because these are the numbers that you need to be looking at every single day to ensure that people are opting in as well as obviously converting on the back end so you can scale your campaigns up. And the first one, what percentage of people who visit your opt-in page are actually opting in and taking some kind of action? If you're not getting at least 20% opt-in rate, then you're going to really struggle to scale campaigns, especially any kind of paid advertising that you might be doing. For the past 12 months, we've been using lead quizzes to drive our opt-in rates through the roof. And in some instances, we're actually getting an opt-in rate up to 70%. But the lowest opt-in rate that we're achieving right now off of paid advertising is 50%. So you can imagine that when you achieve that kind of opt-in rate, it's very easy to scale your campaigns as well as grow your revenue really quickly. The second thing is what percentage of people are actually purchasing off the back end? Now that's obviously a vital number that you need to know. So they've opted in, are they actually buying? <laughs> so what percentage off of that back end? Is it 2%, is it 3%, what is it? There are a couple of numbers that we need to hone in on. And the third number that you need to know is what is the lifetime value of a customer for you? So we look at it in how much does an individual customer spend over the course of 12 months? Because the initial purchase that they may make, whether it be a hundred dollars, let's just say that for as an example, if that initial purchase is $100, but we know that over the course of the year that they spend a thousand dollars, then it means that we can really budget our advertising campaigns and work out how much we can afford to spend upfront to acquire a new customer. Once you know that number, it's very easy to then structure your advertising campaigns in a way that grows the business really quickly because you have a baseline for what you're working with. And uh, like me, when I started out, I'm sure if you're starting out right now or you're getting used to all of this information and knowledge, then you won't have any idea what those baseline numbers are. So where you need to focus in on right now is jumping the shark, making sure that it's a creative opt-in that stands out from everyone else in your industry, as well as optimizing the percentage of people that are opting in for your lead magnet, as well as converting. Because if you double the number of people opting in to your lead magnet, you can very quickly more than double the sales and the profits. And then if you double the number of people that are purchasing after they've opted in, once again, you can see where I'm going, it's very easy to grow your business really quickly. And those few things, once you hone in on them, they're actually simple little tweaks that you can make in the business, but it will really mean the difference between whether your lead magnet and subscriber base grows or your business fails. Because as you probably have already worked out right now, you can't have sales unless you have leads. Say it with me, you can't have sales unless you have leads. You're not generating leads on a daily basis or your target number of leads on a daily or weekly basis, then your business isn't gonna grow how you want it to grow. Having a strong lead generation campaign is the thing that will really stabilize cash flow in your business. Otherwise, cash flow will be like a roller coaster ride. Some days it's great and you're at the top of the world, but the next day you kind of have that anxiety is when is this thing gonna bottom out? And if you have that constant anxiety happening in the background, and if your stress levels are through the roof, then it's not only gonna cause you anxiety, it's gonna make you constantly worry every single night before you go to bed. I remember what it was like, but your cash flow is never ever gonna be consistent and you're never gonna have that strong grounding that will help you grow the business from. If you wanna know if your list building strategy is set 
to generate over 100,000 leads and more and convert them into paying customers, head over to benangel.co forward slash list builder to take the quick quiz to immediately, and yes, I mean immediately in less than 60 seconds, identify the holes in your list building strategy. I hope you found these tips super useful and be sure to tune in to the next video in this three-part series coming out very shortly. Leave us a comment below, hit like, subscribe, and of course share, and I'll catch you next time. Take care.